Like if I really think about it and I really reflect on, you know, whether it's the app that I'm building or the person I'm mentoring or the time I'm spending this afternoon, do I feel good about what I just did? Mm. And for me, that's always led me well. You know, maybe not always in money, but in, in the richness that I want to have in my life before I die. I love that. You know, it's, a, it's not all money. And then that leads to money. I love it. <laughs> Always leads to money for me. It's like crazy. Every time I try to do something for money, I yes. fall. Every oh time gosh. I'm like, let me help. Here's all my stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh, here's the person on the plane giving me a project for like a quarter million dollars. Wow. Check it out guys, episode 12, Leaders Create Leaders. In this episode, we're gonna be meeting up with Mona Patel, the solo founder and CEO of Motivate Design. This is a company that represents over 2,000 designers across the world. And Mona herself has been a UX designer, an expert in the field for over 18 years. She's also a professor at the Parsons Design School, and she's a best-selling author, and she's just an all-out badass. But She's gonna get into her backstory and talk a little bit about her culture and how growing up, she actually was in a really tough position where they didn't allow females to be put first. In fact, when I was reading her book, she tells a story how when she was growing up, she was eating ice cream on the couch next to her brother and her grandmother came up and literally took the ice cream right from her and gave it to her brother. So we're gonna talk about her culture and her backstory before we get into how she became one of the most renowned UX designers in the world. You know, I, I am Indian mm -hmm. and in, I don't wanna blame culture, but in the culture that where I grew up, it's, it's like borderline illegal mm -hmm. to put yourself first as a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, your job is to serve. Your job is to, you know, make food, serve food, pick up the dishes, make the dishes, raise your kids. And the guys go make money and the girls stay home. And this is like extended family, you know. My parents are different, but not because they were born different, because they had a really annoying daughter yeah. who made them different, yeah. you know. But growing up that way, you're not supposed to put yourself first. So the amount of guilt I had to deal with, wow. you know, around I'm going to prioritize myself was like that hill was so high for me to climb. You know, it was just, I didn't even know, is it left, right, right, left, or do I stumble up? Like, how do I get up that hill? Because in cellular structure, you know, in me, I didn't have that, that ability quite yet to put myself first, to say, this is what I want, and everybody else stand in line, you know, or not. Yeah. I, didn't have, I didn't have the confidence, right? right. And so that's, that was a huge, um, and it, it unraveled slowly, but last year was where it like all hit. Uh, wow. Really, really powerful. But you know, you come out on the other side of that. There's no fog. There's no hill. Yeah. You know, now you're just like, this is amazing. For, for just for the audience, yeah. um, what is UI UX? <laughs> I know. So a lot of people think of um, of UX as UI. Yeah. So if you're on an app or you're on a website, everything you see is a user interface. That's what UI stands for. Mm. And so a lot of people think of UI designers as people who design that. It right. gets confused with visual design, but really it's about what do you put where so that people can get to where they want to go. So if you think of our job in a simpler form, like we're building roads. You have a person at point A, you want to get them to point B. How do I design the screens that will get them from point A to point B? UX takes it up a level. It's about the experience that you want people to have. So you have person at point A, you have the goal, which is point B. How do I get you to want to go there? You know, so I can design as many screens as I want. I can make it simple, I can make it easy, I can make it efficient, but if you don't want to go there, if you're not persuaded to go there, then you're not going to. There's no emotional connection. So user experience is about understanding this person's mindset. And when you build the road, build the right road. Um, and get, person, get the person from point A to point B, not because you want them to go there, but because they want to go there. Right. And that's, I think, I, that's, if I can simplify it in terms of what I do, yeah. that's been it. It's oh, having wow. this like humility around, I can't make anybody do anything they don't want to do. Right. But what I can do is design screens that make it simple and design experiences that tap into basic human needs so that they want to. So how did, how did you find this? Like, how did you find this passion? How did you 
you know, find this craft. Like, yes. did you always look at yourself as a designer growing up? No, and you're gonna hear a theme, I think, for me of stumbling upon things and then just having my eyes open enough to know something cool has come into my life. Mm. Um, so I got into UI UX, I stumbled upon it because I was in, in college and I knew I wanted to do psychology. So I'd taken some bio classes. My dad's a doctor, and he was like, you're going to be a doctor. Yeah. And I took some bio classes, and I was like, no, I'm not going to be a doctor. That's disgusting. <laughs> uh, and so I took psych classes. I was really, really excited about learning what drives people, what motivates them, what keeps them moving, yeah. and um, a little bit too chicken to tell my dad I was going to be a psychologist. Right. So I found this engineering psychology combo. And yeah. the engineering is like on the Indian side, it's like a check. Mm -hmm. It counts as one okay. of the things you're allowed to be. <laughs> <laughs> on the, on the um, psychology side, it's what I actually wanted to do. Right. It was amazing. So we were redesigning vacuum cleaners and redesigning dental floss and really getting to the heart of like, how do you observe people, see what the problem is, and then design cool stuff. And I didn't realize how creative I was until then and you know when I had to come up with a new vacuum cleaner I had to come up with a new um, like there was a new wheelchair I remember uh, a new digital camera before it launched and it was so fun like I, I could instinct like, instinctively know this is what I should be doing wow. and, and that's the thing that I think people are scared of paying attention to um, I still remember the conversation with my dad. I still remember telling him like, this is what I want to do. I remember coming out of college and being nervous about a job market because everyone was going to like, you know, bio and chemistry and I was this engineering psychologist and where do I go to get a job? But I just, I knew that's what I needed to be doing. And then I just got good at it. You know, I think it, it was that humility, that perspective around, oh, I'm just creating a road. You know, I'm not taking my idea and trying to sell people on it. Um, that got me kind of going up in, in, in the field. And then in 2009, I just, I wanted to do it for myself. I mean, that was as simple as it could be. I had come up with a lot of ideas and I realized that I was scared of following through on my own ideas. It had nothing to do with the place that I worked with. I mean, everything was great, but I was missing something. Like I wanted to own, yeah. you know, a part of my future growth. Yeah. And so um, without a plan, <laughs> I basically quit started a consulting practice of one, and then the work just kept growing, you know, and the way that we do it and having this perspective and all the, the cool ways that we've kind of simplified UI UX so that anybody can access it, that's what kind of kept going and, and turned me into uh, an entrepreneur from a UI UX person. But it took, it took a lot of um, strength to do that. I, I remember yeah. my designers just changed the title, the CEO, and I was like, what are you doing? I'm a UX strategist. And, it, and they, they changed, it, changed it and they said, you're not anymore. You know, at this point we have 14 people here. Somebody has to run the company. That's what you do. Um, wow. It was stumbled upon, stumbled upon. It was like totally chicken. Um, and that's what led to the book. That's what led to all of my passion around, God, if you just stop being a chicken, how much you can accomplish. So one thing that I actually learned from Mona was how to reframe your mindset by asking the right questions. Now, I've always been a problem solver. You know, that you're never gonna be able to truly, truly move forward unless you really become solution oriented. But it was really interesting to understand how Mona discusses how to use the right words and questions in order for you to reframe that mindset. For instance, instead of saying, what if I can't, she switched that question to what if I don't, and then by doing that, you take a problem and turn it into an opportunity. All right, so I have a question for you. What is a word that you hate? It's an easy one for me, can't. Can't is a word that I hate. Um, again, back to my upbringing, right? I was told so many times, no, you can't do that. Right. And uh, I think that's what brought out the toughness that uh, is in me now that I use to be an entrepreneur. But I think we say it too much to kids. I think we say it too much to our team. I'm actually working on a, a children's book of an elephant that goes to a playground. Um, she loves to play. She sits on the swing. She breaks the swing. And so she feels bad, and then right. she's like, fuck this, I'm gonna redesign the swing. Right. So she asks all these what if questions, like what if it has temperature control, and what if it makes fart noises, and you know, she kind of goes off, and there's this skunk the entire time who's like, we can't do that, that's not in the budget. We can't do that, that's not in scope. It's in kid language, but essentially, that's right. what the skunk is saying. And um, the point is not to live your life in black and white like the skunk, but to remember that ideas and 
the world opens up when you're just in full color. Right. You know, and so don't say can't. Um, that's a big rule in our house, uh, yeah. but it's I'm allergic to that word. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Do what you can. Do what you can. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, even after 18 years of, you know, becoming this design expert, I mean, Mona's, you know, her book is unbelievable. She really killed it on her TEDx talk. But, you know, she got to a point where she really didn't feel fulfilled inside. And she talks a little bit about how, you know, after a whole year thinking everything was great, and the next thing you know, she looked at her bank account and the business was really sinking. And this really gave her, you know, the opportunity to, to rethink about where she was at in her life. And I think we all go through this at different points. And this kind of goes into really finding your why. You know, and I've talked about this, you know, a lot of times, how important it is for you to truly, truly find your why in life. And Mona did that. And by really figuring that out and digging deep and figuring out what really drives her, she now is killing it more than ever before. I love when, like especially mentoring, when you spend time with somebody and there's like that light bulb that goes off and you see that they are gonna change the entire trajectory of their life as a result of that thing that you said. That, I am so addicted to that. Uh, yeah. I am so addicted. So, I, you know, I'll do it on big stages. Yeah. I'll do it, you know, with big clients. Uh, I'll teach my team to do it. But I try to make sure that that is happening at least weekly, ideally daily. Um, that is why I'm here. Like, I know that's why I'm here. There's this really awesome feeling around serving someone else, you know, and that leads to the power and the money Love and the, all that stuff. That, that came after. We are on the we are on the same path, girl. <laughs> Guys, hopefully you took a lot from this episode on why UX is so important for your business and also personally, how are you designing your life? How are you reframing your mindset and asking yourself the right questions to take your problems and turn them into opportunities? So another episode of LCL. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to comment, make sure to subscribe, share this with your friends, we appreciate it. Let us know if there's anybody else you want to add to the show. It's your boy, GA. Peace. Both of this to, to, to have the mindset of like, you're wrong. And yes. like go and figure it out. I love that. Okay. I love that. I mean, to push all the way against what am I missing? even and that could be a more humble way to take it i'm at the airport to figure out what am i missing i'm not leaving this airport That's until right. i figure out what am i missing keeps you in a strength you know in a powerful yeah. state it tells you what you're trying to do and then when you accomplish it you go home if you figure it out in the first five minutes go home yes like you don't need to stay there forever but if you did not figure it out in three days don't get frustrated you're on a mission yeah. to figure out what are you missing. And it, it, that's the curiosity, right? That's the, I, I want to know what I'm missing. I, I'm here to know what I'm missing and I'm not gonna presume or assume that I know enough about your life that I can design. I mean, some of the first questions I asked even were how many people have you talked to and how did you talk to them? You know, if you sent a 2,000 person survey, do you know your customer? You know, can you represent them? If you've done a lot of research, you can put yourself in the user's shoes, but most of the time you haven't. You know, you don't really know what their life is like. You don't really know where their, queen, their, their pain point is. And once you resolve one, there's another one that emerges. It's mm -hmm. like when you get a massage, right? You like get one side yeah. kicked and then the other side starts hurting. Yeah. Um, and so to const constantly stay in their life, I, I mean, I, of course I'm biased on this, but I find it so fascinating to do. I could do it all day. Yeah. Um, Cause you get all these like really awesome sparks of insight that keep your product moving forward, that give you new ideas. Um, yeah. You know, like, I think it was Steve Jobs who said that um, the same way that you mentioned that you never got the product right the first time, mm -hmm. that a, a great product is never finished. Yes, nice. And um, do you, like, it's interesting because, like, I always feel that way, yeah. you know, like with Elite Daily, like it was like, our, if you looked at like the launch of Elite yeah. Daily, I mean, it looked like, it, it looked like what it was, a yeah. bunch of young people who didn't really know how to build a website, like built it on their own, WordPress, and just was, and, and, and then learned, learned as we went, yeah. listened to what people liked, they didn't like, observed, started to make iterations, V2, V3, V4, started to understand our data then, you know, and, and continuing to, to, to you know, to grow it and mm -hmm. to iterate and to Love it. add Love features it. to it and test new things. Some things worked. We launched our app. It didn't really work well. We, we changed yeah. that. 
you know, and the same thing with founders. I'm going through that, you know, yeah. and slowly but surely kind of having that patience of like, you know, hey, we're not going to perfect this. There's a lot that's happening. There's a lot of disruption happening in the marketplace. But you know what? Let's create the culture. Let's actually provide the resources. Let's give the Love education. That. And then let's find out what they what these entrepreneurs really need and what their pain points really are. Yeah. So um, I, I guess it. I would ask you, like, you know, I guess for the entrepreneurs out there that like, I guess they struggle with like never knowing, like, are they headed in the right direction? Yeah. What would you say to the entrepreneurs that don't have that confidence just yet? They're just getting going. It's like to understand, you know, that they're going, they're headed in the right direction. And to be, you know, do you have a set of questions that you ask? Like, how do you know? 